Good morning, folks. Uh, I got you up here into my uh, little storage room. And I told you yesterday I was going to try and do a video on... Oh, oh, look at the shinies. Yes, we're talking money. Let's talk money, okay? And we want to talk money about from a prepping standpoint. So most of you have got fiat currency by fiat currency i mean paper money so i have united states i have iraq i have russia this is fiat currency so i want to make this very clear that whenever somebody says fiat currency that is currency for that nation that is normally paper and normally fiat currency is backed by specific metals um normally gold now here in the united states uh our fiat currency is the u.s dollar but there are several states now i'm talking utah new hampshire wyoming and nevada that are now using what is called gold backs now gold backs as you can see, is actual paper money that's been infused with gold. And this is like uh, one one thousandth of a troy ounce of gold in the dollar, one eight hundredth of uh, gold in the five dollar. Okay, and it, it goes all the way up to a hundred dollar. And then you have, excuse me, I don't have enough money to buy a gold coin. So I've got a stand-in. And this is a stand-in gold coin. And it's gold-plated. But um, just to give you an idea, you do have gold coins. And right now, I believe the gold per ounce is selling at $27.95. Um, it goes up, it goes down. I might be wrong. Anyway. So you have you have gold backs, um, you have constitutional silver. This is silver that was made prior to 1965. This one was made in 1976, but it is a bicentennial, and it is a, a, a certificate of silver. And so you need to have that if you have one that's be after 1964. Um, you need to have the certificate of authenticity for it to be seen as silver. Now, a little trick that I have found is let's say you have a jar of coins. And you have in there dimes, nickels, quarters. You can take a magnet, put it inside that jar coins and spin it around normally any coins that stick to it are going to be pure copper or silver uh the the coins that were made after 1964 from 1965 till now are non-magnetic they will not stick to a magnet now every once in a while you'll find one that will it's really strange um but you can look at the date and you can look it up online if you're not sure. You can look up the date to make sure that that does not contain uh, any kind of silver. Now, moving on. That's a little trick I found. If you're going through a whole bunch of coins and you're trying to find the constitutional silver that's in a big bag of coins or whatever from old time, just take a magnet. And, and run that magnet through it a couple times. And, and anything that sticks to it is normally constitutional silver. Okay, so you've decided you want to buy coins. Okay? Now, you can buy gold in various different ounces. So you can buy gold all the way down to one-eighth of an ounce. Or you can buy gold backs. Um, I, buy, I buy gold backs because they're cheaper. Okay. Um, same thing goes for silver. Okay. Now, 
Let me talk, talk to you about silver. If you want to stack silver for your prepper pantry and have it so that you have it in your pantry, you want to go with silver bars. Okay, now the reason I say this, yes, I have different silver here. Okay, I collect silver. I, I enjoy the look of it. I enjoy the sound of it. I just like silver. Okay. Um, obviously, I don't collect a lot because, like you, I'm kind of poor. But I can give you a little bit of clues if you want to collect silver. Now, what I have here, this is a proof coin. Okay. This was made in 2016. It is an American Eagle one ounce proof coin. Okay, and it comes in its own little case and everything, and uh, it comes with a certificate of authenticity. Now, um, this is the highest priced silver coin you're going to find if you're going for just silver and coinage. Um, this is the coin they used to print out all the rest of these coins, okay? This is the this is the original mint. It's from the US mint. It's the original one. And that's what they use to strike all the other coins. Now, your next lowest down from that is going to be your first day of issuance and your first strike. Now, You'll notice that there are two different companies here. One is PCGS, and one is NGC. I personally like PCGS because they've been in business a long, long time. And it's been proven that when they say a coin is worth such and such, that's what it's worth. But... I have a lot of the NGCs. Now, the NGCs are a fairly new company on the market, but they've been in business now, I want to say 30 years. So, by new is relative, okay? Um, but they have various levels that you can buy, okay? So, this is a first strike. It's the first day of issue, and it has an MS-70. Can you see that? MS-70. MS-70 is the top on brilliance and clarification on the coin, okay? The next one down is an MS-69, okay? Also the first day of issue, right? The next one down is going to be what you call an early release. Again, you're going to have the MS-70 number, but this coin is less than this coin. Now, Reason for that. This is the first day of issuance. There could be mistakes on the coin in the first day of issuance. In which case, you get a first day of issuance like this, and it has a bad marking on it. That coin is now worth a lot of money. Um, you will find this with a lot of constitutional silver. You will find that you could have a quarter that's worth 5000 Okay? $50. I mean, for the cheaper ones, right? So, same thing with the dollar bills. You could have you could have a dollar bill that you got out of the bank and because it has errors in the printing, it's worth a lot of money. Okay? So, first day of issue is more expensive than early release. Early release you you have the same MS70, MS69, MS65, blah blah blah. Okay, you still you have that. Okay, but early releases are more expensive than the silver bars. Okay, so like I said, you have first strike, you have first day of issue, you have early releases. And then you just have just a regular heroic, or what they call a uh, her her heraldic. Anyway, it's just a regular issue, okay? And like I said, you still have the MS-69, the MS-70, 
etc. So it goes, it goes first strike, first day of issue, early release, and then the regular. And then you have the MS-70, the MS-69, right on down the line. Okay? And like I said, there's two different companies. Now, this right here is the difference. This right here is a Morgan. Now, Morgan is worth a lot of money. If you can find a Morgan that has been non-circulated, like this one, and has a high issuance on the clarity on it, which, as you see here, is an MS-63. This coin is probably worth about $50 compared to, like, $30 for the others, okay? So, it's worth a little bit more, right? Morgans are, are, are like a collector's item, like you wouldn't believe, okay? And... The last thing that you have is copper, okay? Copper, you can you can get coins of copper, and, and uh, the copper coins, if you're going to get copper coins, kind of like with the silver, if you're going to be trading it for stuff and, and you want to save it for your prepper pantry, you want to go with the bars. If you're a collector like I am, I just love the coins, okay? Uh, you want to get, like, cool designs. On this one, I've got the Aztec calendar, right? That's the Mayan calendar, Aztec calendar. I just found it to be cool, okay? It's cool looking, so that's why I got it, right? Because it's cool looking, and I've got a bunch of these, okay? But you can get copper bars, just like you can copper silver and again with this with the with the bars on the silver you want to make sure that it does say on it one troy ounce if it says one ounce but not one troy ounce well that's not a real silver bar it has to say troy ounce and the reason it's a troy ounce is because it has to do with the weight and the amount of silver in the bar. Okay. So this is 0 0.999 fine silver. They have to add 0 0.1 of other material. In order for the silver to bind into a bar. That's why it's always 0 0.999. And uh, I recommend. If you can see. I've got, I've got a prolifera here. I recommend, if you're going to do this just for your prepping supplies, I recommend that you get the bars, and I recommend that you get the, the, the bars that you can actually buy a sheet. It's a sheet of silver just like this, except it's, it looks like it's break apartable. You could break off little pieces of silver to trade for things, or get constitutional silver, okay? Um, constitutional silver, you can get it all day long. You, you can even get it from a change machine. People will spend it like it's regular change, and it's actually silver. So you'll find that you might even have some in your pocket and don't even know it. Um, I highly recommend that you do that for your prepper pantry. If you just want to know how to collect, hey, all of this works, okay? Now, these gold backs are in circulation right now um, in these states. And there are small businesses that are using this for their items. So you use this just like you would your fiat currency to buy items in small businesses in New Hampshire, Nevada, uh, Wyoming, and Utah, okay? Um I believe Texas is also starting, some of the small businesses in Texas are also starting to accept gold backs. And so it's just a matter of time before Texas puts out their own gold back. And um, this is worth money. This right now, they say it's worth money, but it's not backed by anything. Uh Overseas currency, like you like you see here, I've got some from Iraq and I've got some from Russia. They are actually backed by gold. 
So, if I were to go and trade this in, it's less than the fiat currency of the dollar, but this money, as our dollar collapses, this money is going to be worth more. Just saying. Because right now, our dollar is not backed by anything. Whereas theirs is backed by gold. So eventually, the overseas currency is going to be worth more than our fiat currency. But you cannot go wrong buying silver, buying copper, buying gold, buying gold backs. Um, these, these coins here that are in this nice little cases and stuff, these are nice collectors. I would not do this if I would not collect these if you're looking just to do, uh, you know, for prepping supplies. Because if you go to trade this for supplies or whatever, when the dollar collapses, well, they're only going to give you what this is worth in the troy ounce, which means you'd be better off with the bar. Okay, they're not going to give you the cost of uh, buying the actual coinage. Now, long term, these will be worth a lot of money, long term, because a lot of people have collected these, and they're going to go through these to eat, you know, and everything else, and so the cases will be busted open, and the coins took out, and if you can keep them, uh, they might be worth a lot more than what they are right now, okay, so let's go over cost. This coin right here cost me about $112 plus shipping. So every time you buy something, um, you got to pay shipping cost, and that's normally $10, okay, because it is coin, all right? These right here cost me about $30 plus shipping. These right here cost me about $25 plus shipping. Now... The silver price and the gold price fluctuate according to the markets and how many people are buying it. Okay. The gold backs, the number one gold back, the smaller ones, cost me about 20 bucks. The $5 ones cost me about $25. And I believe I have one $10 and that one cost me 50 bucks. Okay. Um, this constitutional silver, I got this way in, in 17, in 1976 and it was the bicentennial. And I believe at that time, I think I paid, I think, I, I think I paid $25. I, I'm not sure what it's worth now, but constitutional silver is normally worth about the same as a, as a silver bar. So about $25 to $27, and it fluctuates. Now, where do I get all my stuff from? Well, you if you look around your town, you're liable to find a local coin dealer. And I would highly recommend that you do that. That way you don't have to pay, pay shipping charge. If you want to be total gray man like I am, I try and be total gray man and um, not let any of my neighbors know what kind of money, et cetera, I have, um, then you can order online. Now, when you order online, uh, you might, you're taking a chance on the mail and UPS and it getting to you. Uh, I have not had a problem ordering from two different places. The one is Money Metals Exchange. You have to go actually to the post office and sign for it. I like that because that means that only I can receive the package. Again, you're talking that it might get lost in shipment. Okay. The other company I use is SD Bullion. And I have never had a problem getting their packages through the mail. Um, obviously, I order a little bit here and there. I, I do this about once a month. I order a coin. And over time, I've built up a little bit of a stash. Um, I'm sure there's others out here who have bigger stashes than mine. But um, 
I just like to collect it. Now, the Iraqi currency, the Russian currency, you can get that off of eBay. That's where I got mine. Just make sure that when you order something off of eBay that you look at the reviews and you look at the percentage of positivity as far as that individual uh, mailing stuff. There are a lot of scams on eBay. So be aware, buyer, right? And that's what I have for you today. I hope this helps somebody who is looking at trying to figure out uh, what kind of, of silver to stack or what kind of gold to stack, etc. Okay. Um, like I said, you can stack regular money, you know, our fiat currency, but right now our fiat currency is not worth anything. It, the only reason it's worth anything is because everybody says it's worth something. It has nothing back in it right now. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. And um, hopefully this clarified some things for some people. And uh, I'm sure there's some people out there in uh, the YouTube audience who have a better hand on this. This is just this is just what I have found to be true and, you know, just common basic information. I mean, you can go down a rabbit hole when it comes to coins and, and you know, if it has this, this mark or that mark or, uh, you know, it, it's a rabbit hole. It, it really is a rabbit hole. Um, but this is just a basic info. I highly recommend you stack bars and not these coins. I just like these coins, okay? I, I just do. Um, plus, they're in a nice little case, and I, I like that, you know. Uh, okay, that's all I have for you today, and uh, we'll talk at you later. Bye, sickle!